Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven Gaming Labs, and welcome to my MSYS2 tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to set up MSYS2, SDL2, and a whole collection of other stuff, uh, but mostly just that. And why do we need MSYS2? What is MSYS2? Well, as it says right in front of us here, MSYS2 is a collection of tools and libraries providing you with an easy-to-use environment for building and installing running native Windows software. Well, basically on Windows, doing C is kind of a pain uh, and you do have to use like Visual Studio and we're not gonna talk about how GIMPed C is in Visual Studio, but it is. And there are other build environments, but I like using MSYS2. Now, MSYS2 will give us GCC, which means your code should be for the most part largely transferable over to um, uh, you know, Linux or any platform that GCC happens to support. And it provides a uh, couple bit other stuff like, you know, a proper terminal called uh, Minty, which is always, always, always super nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to grab uh, MSYS2. Now, we're not going to set up any like text editor or, you know, anything like that in this video. This is just going to be uh you know installing msys2 and that'll be it the other thing we're also going to set up is sdl2 which uh you know we're gonna we're gonna take a look at we're gonna grab uh the release because obviously we're gonna need that and we're also going to just create like a really simple uh program uh you know just to display a window you know to make sure everything's working properly okay so now that that's downloaded, I think it finished a bit ago there. And obviously, of course, I'm going to have a link in the description so you guys can look through and see all of the documentation that's included with MSYS2. So easy little setup. And we'll just put it in C MSYS64, which is a decent enough spot to put it. And then it'll create a start menu shortcut. And then it'll go on ahead and install all the, the base packages that come uh, with MSYS2. And I already have a nice little uh, collection of, you know, so you don't have to type out, um, you know, everything that we're going to install. We're basically going to install everything for SDL2, uh, plus uh, the MinGW64 tool chain and all that stuff. So if you don't want to actually type it all out, I have a, I got you covered in the description there's a nice little bit that you can just you know copy over and just move on to so okay so we're going to go ahead and run msys2 now and we're going to hit finish and this is it this is our shell i'm just going to pin this to the taskbar and i'm going to put it right here now i'm going to go on ahead and open up uh the start menu i'm going to scroll down to m and there's a whole bunch of stuff because it installs like clang and then you have your just your general msys terminal and a bunch of other stuff. But the only one that we're really going to mess with is msys2 uh, mingw64. Wow. It's uh, the acronyms here. Now, in a later video, I'll probably show how to set it up with like the Windows terminal or like, you know, setting it up with Visual uh, Studio Code. You know, stuff like that. But I'll probably pretty much just use the terminal and just tab between the two because I find it to be easy. So the first thing we want to do is run Pac-Man, capital S, Y-U, and this will effectively synchronize the package dependencies, make sure everything's up to date. And if not, it will update and give you the option. So we have some updates. So we're just going to hit yes. And then it's just going to grab everything. And then it's going to check the package for integrity. Yada, yada, yada. And then we're just going to hit Y because it'll close the terminal. And then we'll just reopen it again. And we could run it once more just to make sure. And everything should report that it is completely up to date. Oh, it didn't. There were some other uh, dependencies that need to be updated. So we're going to go ahead and just, you know, get everything fully up to date. Now, if you're on Linux, you know, working with C is extremely easy because you know it's it's linux i mean you have gcc you just install the build tools and off you go with your life everything is really simple but on windows it's a little different hence the purpose of this entire tutorial so 
they'll still be updating. So I went on ahead and made a nice, lovely little, uh, I don't actually need this. I believe I was just, yeah, I was testing the, uh, the sound to make sure that my keyboard didn't cut out, which it didn't, which is good. Okay. So everything's up to date now. If we were to run it right now, again, for a third time, everything should report completely up to date. Excellent. So there's nothing to do. So the last thing that we're going to do as far as this goes is I'm just going to copy. So in order to copy paste it to the terminal, you have to use shift insert. And to copy its control insert, you can't just do like a control C. So I'm just going to hit enter there. And wow, that's a lot of stuff there. That's fine. We could we could, you know, select, but it's not really going to take up that much space. And then we're just going to go on ahead and run it. And it will take a second now so that this video is not like super, super long. Uh, I'm just going to pause. And when this is done, I'll come right back. Actually, you know what? Let's let's actually explain something. Let's not pause because that'll run in the background. So I'm just going to open up and do a file explorer here. And we'll just go into local disk C. And then we're going to go into my sys 64. OK, so to explain the folder structure, so my sys is self-contained. You don't have to set environment variables inside of Windows. It's fully contained within itself. So everything you do happens inside of here. Now, when you like create your projects, now there are ways to use it externally. But I'm not going to cover that in this particular tutorial. Um, so basically, when you go into your home directory, you have the retro dev, which is your username. All your projects and everything should be stored inside of here. Uh, so you could just create a folder. Like uh, the other day, I, well, yesterday, I compiled CC65, which is a 6502 compiler. So I would just make a folder called CC65 and then dump everything in there. And then I can work from that directory. Now we're installing make and Git and a whole bunch of other tools they are still grabbing, uh, but they're, they're, they're trucking along. In other words, what I'm trying to say is everything we're going to do, we're going to work inside of this directory on this hard drive. Now, again, eventually I will cover how to use uh, and set up everything so that you could use it externally and, and call everything. Uh, but I feel like for right now, uh, simplicity's sake, and this particular machine uh, has like four terabytes of, you know, space that it can use. So, you know, and the main drive has a terabyte. So I don't really feel like most projects we're going to be working on are going to, you know, exceed that. Okay, so there were a few errors. Um, which is probably fine. Um, I want to say probably fine. So it'll, it'll check the package integrity and so forth. So um, let's actually go on ahead and set up what we're going to do. So I'm going to make a folder and I'm just going to call it SDL2. And inside of that folder, I'm just going to create a new text document. And I'm just going to call it uh, test.c, you know. And the next thing we're going to do is over here, I'd already opened up the wiki. So we're going to go to the wiki, which, you know, you can get right here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go by API reference and display and window management, create a window. And then I'm just going to scroll down and I'm just going to copy all this code into here i'm going to edit this yes i'm going to use literally notepad now i'm going to make a slight change here i'm going to call this sdl2 sdl.h okay and i'm just making that change so it will compile properly which is basically uh all this is really going to do is just make a window it'll even freeze and lock up but it'll make a window and it'll compile so you know that's all we want and now what I want to do is I want to go over to the releases download, which is on GitHub. And I want to grab the 64-bit version of SDL2. And then I just want to go over here. And I just want to copy the DLL into here. Now, you could put this into your uh, 
your system folder on Windows so that you don't need to do this because, you know, I can check for the library there. However, for the sake of getting used to things and making sure that, you know, you're actually including dependencies with your executable, uh, I'm just going to leave this as is and just, you know, include it into each individual project. You're welcome to do it any way you like. Uh, another thing you could do is you could just static link uh, SDL2 inside of your executable, and then you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but we're not going to do that. Not yet. Maybe eventually we'll do that because SDL2 is something we're going to use. And then if we statically link it, you know, we don't have to worry about the operating system or anything else. Okay, so everything looks done. We're going to run Pac-Man one more time just to make sure that everything is up to date. Okay, so... Now let's make sure that we actually have GCC. So we're going to do GCC dash version. And if you want to code in C++, you could do G++ dash version. And we get the same thing. Okay, so as stated before, we already have everything pretty much set up. So we'll do an LS and you'll see we have our SDL folder. So we'll do CD SDL2. We'll hit enter. We'll do an LS again. And you'll see that we have our ever so lovely um files and everything in here so i'm going to do gcc and then we need to tell it what we want it to compile and then we want it to spit out a test.exe and if we were to run this right now it would obviously error because you know it's looking for sdl2 but we don't have sdl2 now there are a lot of different ways that you could run this but the easiest way to run it is to do a dollar sign and then in parentheses, put package config CL flags lives and then SDL2. And if we run this now, it's going to completely and utterly just, it's, it's going to run. Now we're not doing any wall commands or anything like that, but we do have an executable in here. Now there are two ways you can run it. You can run main.exe. Uh, actually, can this run? I guess Bash can't run the executables. Okay. Well, we could just double click it. And now we have an SDL2 window, and then we're done. And so that is that, everyone. You now have a working uh, build environment, and you can run GCC. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. You know, you could even, if you wanted to, you could even run like uh, O3 if you wanted some serious optimizations. Um, don't really need it for this but still you can we'll, we'll we'll cover more as we go because this is going to be a tutorial series covering c and sdl2 but this is the foundation of it all um and everything that's going to be required so i figured might as well go ahead and grab it in one go rather than you know worrying about anything Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next one and in the next one we're going to look at the various different code editors that we can use and uh well i'm probably going to use notepad plus plus because i don't like vs code but you can use anything you like and we're going to get started and we're going to learn how to program c and we're going to use windows and for you linux people it'll be super simple because linux is the superior operating system anyway so you guys won't have any issues at all and i will see you all in the next one y'all have a good one Hey everyone, thanks for watching Raven Gaming Labs. Thanks to all the members and viewers who make RGL possible. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified. If you want to become a member, hit the join button or link in the description below. Members get early access to videos, member-exclusive content, and more. As well, don't forget to join our awesome community over at Discord. Y'all have a good one.